Welcome back to Hannity. In a stunning reversal yesterday, President Obama announced that he would stop withdrawing American military forces from Afghanistan. For years, the president's promised us that he's going to end the war in that country. He made it even a major campaign issue twice. But now 5,500 troops will remain there after he leaves office. According to The Washington Times, that number is half of what top U.S. generals in that country have recommended. The paper also says this is the sixth time President Obama has ignored the advice of his generals on the ground in Afghanistan as well as Iraq. This move did not come as a surprise to former Defense Secretary Robert Gates. Here's part of what he said about the Obama administration's distrust of the military last night on Special Report Watch. What led you to say this about President Obama and the military? President Obama was, quote, deeply suspicious of their actions and their recommendations. I think this was particularly true in Afghanistan. And I think there were people in the White House, and I don't want to name any names, who were constantly goading him and saying, the military's trying to box you in, the military's trying to trap you, the military's trying to bully you, the military's trying to make you do something you don't want to do. I'll name names. Was Vice President Biden one of those people? I think so. And, and I was told so. Joining us now with reaction to all this is the host of War Stories, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North. Colonel, it's great to see you tonight. Tucker, great to be with you. It makes me glad that I fought this war over there instead of in Washington, D.C. when I hear things like that. Well, that's the toughest landscape of all. And Gates, as you know, is not a wild-eyed conservative. He's not, I don't think, particularly ideological. He's also been pretty reticent. He's not a grandstander eager to criticize President Obama. It takes a lot for him to do so. So I think you kind of have to take his word seriously. Do you? Well, look, I, I would not... I, I would not hesitate to tell you the consequences of what he's done. I have a very difficult time telling you why he does the things yes. he does. I can't tell you, Tucker, what's going on in that man's heart or his mind or his soul, but I can tell you the consequences of, of what he has done consistently, not just in Afghanistan, but in Iraq as well, and the broader Mideast as well. So none of it's been particularly good. This is not going to necessarily turn out well because he's not taking the advice once again of the recommendation of 11,000, 10,000 to 11,000, which is what Joe Dunford has recommended. And now we're looking at half that. But it seems like, I mean, just like any problem that you ignore, it becomes more costly as time goes on. So yeah. 5,500 troops now, I mean, there's no well, guarantee that that'll be the maximum number needed. I mean, if we, if we shortchange the force now, don't, doesn't that suggest we're going to need to send many more in the future? Well, he had to do something because he did not want the Iraq outcome to happen in Afghanistan. I mean, he now sees what happened with the precipitous withdrawal, what the troops still call the Obama bug out in December 2011 when they pulled out of Iraq in 30 days. He can't afford to do that if he's going to have any legacy whatsoever. So he's going to gaff it off onto his successor with 5,500 troops on the ground, which, by the way, means very little can be done in offensive operations. Those troops are going to be conventional and special operations units. They're going to remain at bases in Kabul, in Bagram, Kandahar, and Jalalabad. And the Taliban, meanwhile, is going to increase their control over the population. They've got about 30% of the population under their thumb now. It's there because of Pakistan. And they're, the Taliban are going to harvest the opium, collect the taxes, and provide public services such as they are in, in, in Afghanistan. Yes, well, that, that makes sense. You spend a lot of time around the military. Of course, you served in it for many years. Is it your sense that it's weaker now than it was at the beginning of Obama's first term? Well, there's no doubt the numbers are smaller. The, right. the amount of money we're spending on it is smaller. The outcome of that, we saw this in the, in the Carter administration back in the 70s. Every time you gut the budget, and they've gutted it consistently over the course of the last five years, and this administration leaves a military that is weaker than it was the day before. The end result is, look, the, the purpose of having a military is very simple. It's to deter war and win one if you have to fight it. We don't go on the offensive. We don't launch wars against other people. We're not, we're not preemptive even. I mean, we, it took us five major attacks by, uh, by al-Qaeda and finally won enormous attack here in the United States in 9-11-01 before we decided to fight them. So we're not using our, our military as an offensive arm. It is a deterrent. That deterrence has failed in the Middle East. Why? Because of the total lack of leadership. Tucker, we've, we've now got Russia back in the Middle East where they've not been since 1973. 
This is a repeat of the Carter administration on steroids. Yes. And it's leaving us very weak in the area. And yet every time I hear a debate in Washington from the Obama administration about the military, it's always about how do we make the military more inclusive to previously excluded populations? How do we integrate women into combat yeah. units? How do we make sure. it safe for transgenders? It does seem like they view the military as a social experiment and an employment program and not primarily as a deterrent force. Well, I'm not even sure it's an employment program. I think it certainly is a radical social experiment, and they're treating the military like lab rats. And, the, and meanwhile, the best military that's ever existed in any part of the world at any time, which is the one we have today, they're better trained, better led, brighter, better educated, and more combat experienced than any military force in history. Alexander the Great's hoplites weren't as experienced as these guys are. And we're getting rid of them left and right because of that social engineering that they're doing. It's crazy, brother. It's got to be so depressing if you're actually serving right now. Oliver, Indeed. thanks a lot for joining us and for that Always. insight.